High-powered computing systems have always played an important role in advancing what's possible in computer graphics. More compute power or more memory quickly translates into new experiences. Traditionally, if you wanted to get a faster graphics system, you had to shell out a lot of money or wait for a next-generation processor. But today, elastic cloud computing platforms make it possible for any user to access huge amount of resources on demand. For example, you can go to Amazon right now and acquire a thousand CPUs, a terabyte of RAM, and hundreds of gigabits of bandwidth to storage. The supercomputer constructed on the fly would only cost you about $1.30 a minute. So the question is, can we use this potential cloud supercomputer to accelerate computer graphics tasks? In this project, we focused on one challenging task, low latency path tracing of very large scenes. Specifically, in our setup, we have a terabyte scale scene stored in cloud storage, including geometry, texture, and a pre-built scene BVH. Right when the user issues the render command, we seek to acquire thousands of cloud computing nodes, rapidly load scene data from cloud storage into the aggregate memory of these nodes, and produce a path traced image of the scene, including shading and texturing. And finally, shut down the nodes. Our goal is to complete this sequence for terabyte scale scenes in tens of seconds, about the amount of time it takes the artist to go and get a snack. Okay, first let me remind you why path tracing large scenes is so challenging. When accounting for light bouncing around the scene, ray traversal can visit a large fraction of the scene including off-camera objects. For example, here are the objects hit by the blue ray, and then another set of objects hit by the orange ray. Because of this, path tracing systems often assume that all the scene geometry can fit in the array. If the scene grows too large, ray traversal will require repeatedly loading scene data from storage, which can be hundreds of times slower. For example, in this case, tracing the blue path requires bringing these two additional objects to memory. And now that I'm tracing a different path, a new set of objects has to be loaded. As a result, path tracing of large scenes is typically performed on large servers that contain hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes of RAM. Now, here's the catch. Cloud providers can quickly fulfill large resource requests only if they are requested in a small denominations. For example, we had to wait over two minutes to boot a thousand CPUs in the form of eight large 128 core servers on AWS. But that's too bad because we wanted them quick. We could also get the same number of cores in just three seconds if we accept the resources in the form of hundreds of small serverless nodes, each with only two vCPUs and three gigabytes of memory. So, to get the resources immediately, you have to ask for them in a small denominations. So the challenge of using the cloud to massively accelerate path tracing is to scale it out onto many nodes where only a very small fraction of the scene can be stored in the memory of any one node. On top of that, the nodes are potentially scattered around this data center, which leads to unpredictable latency and bandwidth between them. Our contribution is R2E2, a path tracing architecture designed to render terabyte scale scenes on elastic cloud resources. R2E2 maps path tracing to many small cloud nodes using a scene decomposition based approach that divides the scene BVH into trillets and scene texture data into partitions that are sized to fit in the memory of a single node. Given a partitioning of the scene, R2E2 structures path tracing as a set of asynchronously executing services. Each service encapsulates a piece of scene data. For example, the service for tracing rays through trillet 0 contains trillet 0 geometry. The service accepts rays that needs to be traced through the trillet and generates new requests for other services, such as sending the ray to the next trillet that must be traversed. Here we are showing the four trillet tracing services for the BVH on the left. Take this ray as an example. In our service-oriented architecture, the ray leaving a trillet and entering another during traversal is now a ray transfer between the corresponding services. This is how R2E2 breaks down BVH traversal. 
These services work concurrently and asynchronously to trace rays through the BVH. Overall, there are five types of services in R2E2. Ray treelet traversal, surface shading which evaluates BRDFs and performs texture mapping for ray heads, environment shading services for sampling environment maps, and two other services, one for accumulating samples into the frame buffer and one for generating camera rays. As the computation proceeds, these services process requests and generate new requests for other services. Now, efficiently executing path tracing in this service-oriented design required solution to the following challenges. First, how do we partition the scene into services to reduce ray communication? Second, how do we ensure good workload balance? And last, how can we efficiently transfer rays between these services? Okay, the first challenge. Communication between services occurs between trilets, so it's important to minimize the number of trilet to trilet ray transfers during tracing. This is a similar problem to optimizing trilet construction for increasing cache locality in real time ray tracing. So, we adopt the greedy treelet construction algorithm of Ayla and Keras, but we use it to generate gigabyte-sized treelets that fit within the memory of worker nodes, instead of kilobyte-sized treelets to fit into GPU caches. We also extend the algorithm's cost metric to account for geometry instancing in a distributed memory setting. For large texture assets, we simply perform image space partitioning to ensure that each partition can fit in a single node. The second challenge of R2E2 is how to provision services with enough worker nodes to keep up with the incoming requests. For example, the root treelet service must process all rays generated during rendering whereas tracing services for treelets near the leaves of the BVH may only process a small number of rays. R2E2 employs a static worker allocation policy where workers are assigned to services at the beginning of rendering. To estimate load for each service, the rendering begins with a profiling phase that uses exactly one node per service to perform a low resolution, low sample count rendering that tabulates the amount of computation and the amount of bandwidth consumed by each service. It then allocates nodes to services proportional to this measured load. After assignment is complete, each node in parallel loads a copy of the necessary data for the service it must perform such as a treelet or texture partition from the cloud storage. The node processes requests until rendering is complete. The node is never reassigned to another service. We explored alternative allocation strategies that dynamically adjusted the number of nodes allocated to each service over the duration of rendering. But the overhead of periodically loading new treelet data onto the node outweighed the benefits of improved workload balance. One implication of this design is that the entire scene must be loaded in the aggregate memory of all workers. In other words, each service must be allocated at least one node in order for the rendering to complete. As a result, at low worker counts, lightly loaded services that require less than one node may be overprovisioned reducing the number of workers available for the most loaded services. For example, this graph is for a scene with 940 treelets. The red line is our ideal allocation, but with only 940 workers, each service gets exactly one node, resulting in the suboptimal allocation depicted by the green line. The R2E2's ability to more closely match the target allocation improves as we increase the number of worker nodes. For the third challenge, we needed a messaging service to communicate rays with the highest possible performance between these services. And unfortunately, the off-the-shelf messaging services, such as SQS, did not meet our latency and throughput demands. So we rolled our own messaging service out of memcached instances it's basically a fleet of tens of a small but high bandwidth machines 
that serve as our distributed ray queue. So to put it all together, we have a very large scene terabyte scale stored in cloud storage. We have thousands of workers that have three CPUs and only four gigabytes of RAM. And we partition these workers across the services. Those nodes communicate by adding and removing rays from queues, which are stored in memory in a set of high bandwidth memcached instances. Okay, it's time for a quick demo. In this demo, we are rendering the Moana Island scene with a thousand workers. The scene is about 100 gigabytes in size and it's partitioned and stored in cloud storage, in this case S3. The scene objects are sized to fit in the memory of our tiny workers. They each take about 1 to 2 gigabytes of RAM after being deserialized. The objects include scene geometry, textures, and a pre-built scene BBH. For the purpose of this demo, the profiling phase has been done up front and it has assigned a weight to each scene object, which will be used for our static allocation scheme. Now we can invoke the job. Please note at this point, no workers are running. After invocation, the system quickly scales from zero to a thousand tiny workers. And we can go and look at the real time preview. On the right, you can see the percentage of the completed paths network throughput graph, and path completion rate. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit. After about one minute, the job is done. Okay, let's take a look at the results. We implemented R2E2 as a port of the popular PBRT renderer and executed it on a configuration using up to 2500 AWS Lambda nodes for workers and 250 EC2 nodes for queuing support. We compared this configuration to a baseline that executed PBRT on one large 128 core server with 2 terabytes of RAM. This server is representative of a very large modern server farm node. The cloud configuration uses about 60 times more cores and 6 times more memory. It also costs about 14 times more to operate per second. We created two scenes, a variant of the Moana scene where the island is copied 8 times and a terrace scene populated with many objects, inspired by wide cinematic shots. Both scenes require about 1 terabyte of memory to store scene geometry, the BVH, and the textures. Overall, R2E2 is able to complete frame rendering from cold start, including the initial profiling run, booting worker nodes, transferring scene data, and rendering at 16 samples per pixel in about 2 minutes, 4 to 6 times faster than the large server baseline. At 64 samples per pixel, the speed up goes up to 8.6, since the additional path tracing work allows for better efficiency at high node counts. Closer inspection of the Moana Excel results reveals that R2E2 is able to complete rendering before the scene has been transferred and deserialized in the large server baseline. Path tracing is also faster on R2E2 because of the sheer number of cores used. Here we show the time spent on loading scene data from cloud storage into memory for R2E2 and the baseline. Notice that all scene data must be loaded into the large server's main memory so the cost is linear in scene size. On the other hand, R2E2 only loads a small portion, about a gigabyte, of the scene into each node in parallel, so the scene load times are independent of the scene size. Finally, R2E2's performance improvements relative to the baseline scale with the number of nodes used. We also created the smaller versions of the Moana scene that are about 100 and 500 gigabytes in size, R2E2 is able to scale performance on these smaller scenes as well. We want to remind you that R2E2's speedup comes from the scalability to many nodes, but it also results in higher rendering costs than the baseline. In summary, we have developed a cloud port of the PBRT renderer that is able to run on thousands of cloud nodes. The system uses scene decomposition techniques, but destructures them in a server-oriented way for cloud execution. 
by using large number of resources, we have shown that terabyte scale scenes can be path traced in tens of seconds to just a few minutes, five to eight times faster than a large memory multi-core server. Of course, future work must address key issues like how to port PVH or Trillet construction to massive scale out processes. More generally, we use today's serverless cloud platforms as a way to prototype low latency massive scale out supercomputing. Much like how early GP GPU research shaped the evolution of programmable GPU designs, we hope our work inspires further discussions of how cloud platforms might evolve to better handle large scale graphic workloads. Finally, our experiences suggest that putting a cloud supercomputer in the hands of artists and content creators has many exciting applications for graphics. We encourage others to consider how other graphic workflows might be redesigned for massive cloud scale-outs in the future.